What makes pirates scary and dangerous? For me, it might be because they attack isolated target. You know, we are not sea dwellers, so when we are on a ship in the middle of the sea, we are basically isolated. That's the sea pirate. But what if there are sky pirates? There are several sky pirates in popular media. I know at least one from Final Fantasy XII. But no, I'm talking about real world here. There are indeed sky pirates. It's the Frygate Bird. But why do they have that title? Let's talk about it. Let me brought up the question. What exactly is Frygate Bird? Frygate birds are birds in the genus Fregata. They are classified in the Familia Fregatidae. Currently, only one genus exists in this family. They are the closest relative to the boobies. Yes, you heard that right. Boobies. But hey, don't get distracted now. Ding ding ding. We are talking about Frygate bird here. If it's not obvious enough, they are named after the Frygate warship, which are built for speed and maneuverability. They are mostly distributed in the equatorial ocean, but can also be found up to the subtropical. Currently, there are five species of frigate birds. They have varying sizes, ranging from around 66 centimeters to more than one meter, but that's their length. Their wingspans are usually twice their length, or even longer. This is because they are soaring birds. More on this later. Females are usually bigger than males. And they usually have white underbellies. Males of some species also have white underbellies though. Other parts are usually blackish. Juvenile usually have more white and brownish feathers. What's eye-catching about their adult male is this red patch. This red thing is their guler pouch. Guler means throat, by the way. This pouch can be inflated. More on this later. They have relatively small feet. Their feet are less webbed than most seabirds, as they don't really swim. The claws of their third digits are pectinate on the medial side. Pectinate means shaped like comb. While we don't have a definite answer to what it is used for, there are some theories. Basically, the theory is that they use it as a literal comb. Might simply be to print their head feathers, or might also be useful to comb out ectoparasite from their feather. But again, no definite answer, just theories. Also, just to clarify, pectinate claw is not a unique feature of frigate birds. Other birds in the Ordo Suliformes have this too. Some random birds also have this, like the barn owl family, but other birds may have different location of com. Their beak is long, slender, and hooked. They have a slit-like nostrils, connected to a salt gland so they can excrete excessive salt. These structures are typical of seabirds. What's unlike other seabirds is their uropigial gland, which is small. So frigate birds couldn't print their feather with much oil. Even so, it's not a big problem for them because they don't dive nor swim. Their tail is deeply forked, but the forking might not be visible unless they are maneuvering in the sky. So, why are they called the sky pirates? They exhibit a feeding behavior called kleptoparasitism. Basically, they stole food from other birds. Sometimes, a lot of them even chase one bird just to steal their food. You know, like a pirate. But what I want to clarify is, they are not the only bird that do this. Many other seabirds also do this, you know, like seagulls. I'm sure you've seen a seagull steal food from people, maybe even from you. So, why do the frigate birds get the honor to be called the sky pirates? Well, because they are cool. Just look at them. Anyway, like I said, this habit is overemphasized. They actually hunt most of their food themselves. Large portion of their food are flying fishes. Because, like I said, frigate birds don't swim and dive. So, they eat flying fishes that jump out of water. They also like to eat squids. Usually squids that swim to the surface while being chased by predators. Wait, now that I think about it, that's kinda a pirate behavior, isn't it? I guess they do deserve the title. Like some pirates, frigate birds sometimes also kidnap children. By that I mean chicks of other seabirds. But instead of ransoming them, they just eat them. I mean, what else would they do to them? Birds don't trade with money. They don't really trade at all. Anyway, during mating season, 
males will find a suitable place for nest, usually on a remote island. They form a breeding colony, with up to 5,000 individuals even, but arranged in clusters of nests. These males will then inflate their pouch and shake their wings while raising their bill towards flying females. They also make this sound with their pouch. Females that pass by would then approach them and initiate mating ritual. They are usually monogamous during each breeding season, so they only mate with one individual per season, but can choose to mate with another partner during the next season. Oh, just a fun fact, they need to deflate their pouch slowly, so sometimes they can be seen flying with an inflated pouch when they are in a hurry. Parents will guard and take care of their chicks for several weeks. Oh, and Sometimes they share breeding islands with other seabirds. And if you remember the thing about them kidnapping other birds chick, yeah, this is a good opportunity for that. Even juvenile frigate birds do this kidnapping. While they are good in soaring and maneuvering, they are bad at any other forms of locomotion basically. Their large wings make it hard for them to flap those wings, which is why they are a thermal soarer. Thermal soaring is a process where a soaring bird needs to hop on warm rising air columns and circles around to gain some heights, and then proceed to glide off that thermal column. As you might have guessed, this is unpractical, which is why frigate birds usually stay soaring in the air. They can soar for days, maybe even weeks or months, but they still need to sleep of course, which is why they sleep mid-air. When they sleep like this, they usually sleep one hemisphere at a time. This enables them to still be able to react relatively quick if something bad happens. They do still prefer to sleep on land though, and of course, they can still sleep with both hemispheres if they get the chance to. While currently they are seabirds, some early frigate birds actually live on freshwater environment. The limnophregata from the early Eocene of western US were found on lacustrine deposit and have shorter and less hooked bills. We don't really know when and why exactly frigate birds move into marine environment. And who knows, maybe they didn't even steal from others when they still live on freshwater environment. So yeah, that's frigate bird. They don't even steal from others that much, yet we still call them pirates. Sometimes, we just like to overemphasize on something and label others. Is it justifiable? Who knows? But for now, Let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now.